Hey guys, welcome back to Talking Blues. Welcome back to another video. We hope you're all doing well today. We're your hosts, Ben and Mark. Before we get into this video, please make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, turn the notification bell icon on to be notified when we upload. And yeah, let's just get into this. So before we actually get into the main topics of this video, we just want to apologize to the other day because we were we haven't uploaded for two days. And it's that's pathetic from our side. So we really do apologise. It's been a bit, yeah. <clears throat> time's been a bit busy and, we, you know, time's got away with us a bit. But we're here now. And we're, uh, we're going to give you all the news from the la from the weekend and over the last mm -hmm. however many days that we've been away. Um, <clears throat> also, before we get into this video as well. Um, so we did say that we weren't going to be doing the watch along this weekend and the morning live stream. Things have changed. We are able to, so stay tuned for both live streams as they will be live with you. So we will be live with you Sunday for those. So yeah, let's just get straight into today's video, and we will and we'll discuss all of today's, all of the last few days' news. So after the tragic, tr and I say tragic, refereeing performance on Sunday from Anthony Taylor, a petition went out. Uh, to stop him refereeing Chelsea games. <clears throat> and nearly 150 people signed it. I was surprised. You know, I was surprised how quick that developed. And um, the Premier League has finally done something. And they've said, well, they've said something. It's not what we wanted to hear, as we no, know. But the Premier League has come out and said that um, Anthony Taylor will not be taking off Chelsea games. And mm. I am fuming. Fuming. Yeah, he can piss right off. I'm sorry, but if he can get away with not seeing a hair pull and so can Mike Dean, you're having a laugh. Well, Mike Dean. Mike Dean was VAR. And he's a, a lifelong Tottenham yeah, supporter. Yeah, supposedly he's a lifelong Tottenham supporter, as we discussed this the other day. But my view from this is, if the referee doesn't see it, and VAR see VAR see it, mm -hmm. then VAR is likely to see that because they get the full action replay of what that what happened. If VAR doesn't do something about that, then that just shows the Premier League is full of corruption. It stinks. It stinks to the core. Well, they're they're full of bias. Yeah. And I think before anyone refs a game or controls far, they should de declare an interest, especially if two teams are playing and they're in support. Yeah, why wasn't there a conflict of interest declared? Hmm. Any answers? Precisely. No. Like I said in the previous video, it's all cloak and dagger. I, I, it just baffles me how, yeah, fine, the referee may not have looked at it and seen it. But if it goes to VAR and it's checked and it's seen, then surely Mike Dean on VAR has to go, hang on a minute, Anthony, go and look at the monitor. Or this, there's, there's a potential red card here, please. Uh, please go and look at the monitor. We need you to check it. And VAR is CCTV. So you want evidence? You know, just it like was street. there. Everyone CCTV. who watched the game on Sunday, whether it was on Sky Sports New, Sky Sports, or any other channel that you watched it on, VAR gives pictures yeah. to all TVs. As far as I'm concerned, this backhand is good. That! It's disgusting how us fans are treated in such a way that we're mugged off. Like, we've seen it. We've seen what happened. Why can't you see what happens? You know, you're the official. If you're turning a blind eye to that, then what else are you going to turn to a bl turn a blind eye to? What's going to happen on the pitch before you do something serious about these referees? Has someone got to die on the pitch? Has someone actually got to physically die on the pitch from a foul... Or be really badly injured before you act before the Premier League actually do something. 
because the PGMOL don't seem to care. Dad, it's like if I was in a workplace and I punched someone and then, the, and then I said I didn't do it, but everyone else said he didn't do it. But then the CCTV was checked and it saw that I, and, the, and the CCTV shows that I did it. Mm -hmm. Well, the CCTV is lying. <clears throat> the camera ain't lying. The camera it never lies. Records the time, you know. Records the time, yeah. records the footage. You know, it, the, venue, the way the it is, the way it is, it's, it's disgusting. It's corrupt. It's diabolical. And us fans have to sit through that? Mm. No, I don't feel like I'm getting value for my money. <clears throat> you know, I feel like I'm being conned. Because I wanted to see my team win. And if that hair pull had been spotted by VAR, which clearly was anyway, but it wasn't given. Mm. If that VAR, VAR had checked it and said, look, to Anthony Taylor, go and check the monitor. That was a red card. That's a red card. Huh. And in, that's an instant red. No questions. Min minimum, yellow. And a free kick to Chelsea. And the game continues and we win. Because that corner doesn't happen. The only thing he was concerned about giving red cards <clears throat> was the handbags at dawn. Yeah, yeah. And to give... Right. So, it's okay for you to give red cards to Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Conte who had handbags. We did it all over shaking hands, yeah. <laughs> right? Bloody, bloody, blah, 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 right? Thomas Tuchel, the reason Thomas Tuchel um, was so angry was because in Germany, in German football, when you shake someone's hands, you look them in the eye. You look them dead in the eye. Antonio Conte didn't. Tom, all Thomas Tuchel wanted was to him to look him in the eye. That was it. But what Antonio Conte... He, Antonio Conte started... The whole issue with coming out of his technical area, going into Thomas Tuchel's technical area and screaming and shouting because they scored. Now, I'm not being funny, but stay in your technical area. That's what they're for. They're to protect both managers. And to protect the staff. And what was the assistant doing? He should have seen that coming before it even happened. But, oh, well. But, my point here is, if you're going to give two red cards for handbags to the managers, but yet you don't see a hair pull, or you see it, but you turn a blind eye to it, come off it. Come off it. It's, it's just... And the fact they're going to let him continue to ref Chelsea games. There was something going around on Twitter that he was supposed to be refing this game on Sunday. But now it's Paul Tierney. Thank God. Because I am pretty sure Chelsea fans want him hurt. Dad, what do you think? Yeah, I think it needs, um, you know, more scrutiny. Yeah, um, you know, the, the rules need to be changed pretty quick um and you know selecting these refs and officials for games yeah. um it, like i said they you know all should declare an interest you know mm. um because you know many of these referees linesmen officials they all support a particular team yeah and you know nobody knows what's going on behind closed doors you know handshakes backhanders i mean <clears throat> i just feel like we are at this point now where we're the best league in the world. But yet the standard of refereeing is absolutely pathetic. Oh, it is. For the best league in the world, we're the worst standard of refereeing in the world. Why isn't it the best standard of refereeing in the world? But the best league in the world? You don't see it in Italy. Oh. You don't see it in Spain. Oh. Oh. You don't see it in Germany. You don't see it in France. You see it only happen here in England, in the UK, and it's disgusting. It's ruining football. It's ruining the enjoyment for the fans. If I go to a game and I have to see that, then I've be, I've been conned out of my money. 
this is this is the problem where there is big money you know there will always be this surreptitious behavior yeah. and uh you know we see it in boxing as well you know uh where fights have been fixed you know our decisions have been uh poorly given and you know it's just this big money and corrupt <laughs> It is what it is. Like mm. at the end of the day, now we can't do anything about it. The petition's gone out. Uh, I rec. I think by now, well, over one hundred and fifty thousand people have signed it, so mm. we should be ready to go. Mm. Um, but we need to move on from this from that for now because we'll come back to it if it happens again, and I will be definitely one to scrutinise Anthony Taylor if he referees a Chelsea game again. Okay. I'll scrutinise it because what I saw. Was my club get three point three valuable points get taken away from them, and a play and and a Chelsea player Cucurella get assaulted? Didn't he do the same <clears> with um, Reece James in a Liverpool game? He did. He read cards. Do you know him. what? He's had issues on six multiple occasions with us. Mm. He's had one where Harry Maguire head headlocked Aspilicueta. I remember that one. Mm. He had the Liverpool game where J- Reece James got. Get sent off a handball, which wasn't even a handball because his body was like that. Yeah. Um, there was Batshuayi; he got kicked in the groin by Maguire. The Tottenham game where Gazaniga uh, dived on Alonso. There's been multiple issues with Anthony Taylor. I don't know how the referee, the PGMOL, haven't taken him off Chelsea games full time or officially stopped him from refereeing because you, it, we look at all these incidents and it just carries on. But you know, sorry guys, my phone was going off then. Um, but yeah, we got to move on from this now. But if it happens again, I'm going to scrutinise even more, and this time I'm going to come down on come down on it harder. Um, things anyway. Yeah, moving on to some better news. Better, better news. Let's have a look at this. Wesley Fafana. What's been said? You know, it's exciting stuff now. Wesley Fafana has agreed personal terms with Chelsea, so the contract would be ready in case the two clubs find an agreement. Chelsea are preparing a new bid as they want Fafana as priority target. Leicester insist on their position. Tough one, but still open. I'm all for it. People are saying to me, oh, 21-year-old Fafana could be the most expensive centre-back in the world. Fine. Fine. It's not Harry Maguire, is it? If you were saying I'm paying 81, 85 million for Harry Maguire, I'd tell you to go piss off. But it's, it's Fafana. He's yeah. French. He's, he's quick. He's, yeah. he's intelligent. He's young. He's got... S- he joins Chelsea, he's got two experienced defenders with him, Koulibaly and Thiago Silva. And Aspilicueta to encourage him. And then you've got Reese James and Cucurella and Chilwell either side of it, either side of the wing backs. He's fine. Hmm. Not it wasn't like when Maguire went, went to United and he was stuck next to Eric Bailly. Or Blooming Phil Jones. Or Lindelof. We got quality. Experienced quality players with know-how that will teach him and guide him and improve him. Now, I think it would be a great buy, and I do think it'll happen. Dad, your thoughts? Yeah, I think Wesley Fafana is a great uh, central uh, defender, and you know he will gain invaluable experience at Chelsea. And like you said, with the likes of. Um, you know, Koulibaly and Thiago Silva. Koulibaly and Thiago Silva there. Yeah, you know, he will come on heaps and bounds. And, like, he's a young player, you know, many years in him. And, yeah, he would be a great asset for our team. Mm, exactly. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I really oh. do think he's a great player. Mm. And I do think he could become one of the greatest, one of the best centre-backs in the world, given, given the, if you give him the chance. Um, you know, so I'm all for the deal. But let us know in the comments, guys, and, you know, what you think. Uh, let us know your thoughts down below about Fofana. Uh, so, moving on now. We have a bit more news that broke yesterday about uh, Kasady. I don't know much about this kid. But let's have a look and see what was said. 
Cesar Casady to Chelsea. Here we go. Inter will receive 15 million euros plus 5 million euros in add-ons. Documents ready and now set to be signed. There's no buyback clause. Six-year deal, medical in 40 hours. Bowley wants a Casady as part of top talent strategy after Carney and Hutchinson. Now, I don't know much about Casady. I know he's an Italian midfielder, 19 years of age. Mm. Apparently, he's very skillful. Apparently, he's very quick. Apparently, he's intelligent on the ball. He's strong. He's got that 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 football knowledge, that that quick footballing brain to pick a pass. Um, you know, he's also good as an you know he's a number eight and a number six and a number ten in combined, so he can do it all. Uh, so he's good for a tackle. He's good to control the game. You know, he he helps. I think he could play in the double six in the future if you if we, Thomas Dugal wanted him to. Um, I think he could play as a number 10 if Thomas Dougal wanted him to. But let's just see how it develops. But I'm seeing, I'm seeing the future of our midfield. You've got Amari Hutchinson, Carney Chikawamaker, Kasidi. Three, three midfielders. If Thomas Dougal decided to go to a back four and play a 4 3 3, that's your midfield. That's your midfield for the future, sorted. You've got Charney, uh, Carney Chiquemaca, Carney Chiquemaca, who is, like, 18. You've got Cassidy, who is 19. Amari Hutchinson, who is 18 or 19, I think. Yeah, that's your midfield, sorted. So for maybe if you want to develop in the, in the next few years, you want to see the, the new crop of Chelsea players come through. They're the ones you want to see come through. And that's in midfield. Dad, your thoughts? Well, you know, I've never heard nothing of him until today. And um, a 19-year-old uh, um, year old midfielder. Now, I think, yes, um, to bring them to Chelsea, um, even to put them into the academy to gain more experience um, and play them in the... Uh, lesser games, yeah, and give them time. But yeah, you know, we're talking future generation here, yeah, because like we say, our team, you know, 60 70% of it are, you know, reaching this sort of pinnacle now in their career and on the decline and ready to go. So we've talked about, you know, dead wood, and we need to bring a new generation of players in, young blood. You know, um, quick reaction times, mm. very skillful on the ball. Yeah, I yeah I do. I, I think, you know, it, it'd be advantageous. Mm. And <clears throat> the other thing that I read the other day is that Todd Bowley wants this American-style contract for most players now, uh, for under, like, under 30s, mm. uh, where mm. he ties players down to long-term contracts. So yeah. the likes of Rhys James, um, Mason Mount... And Amanda Brozier are all interested in signing six to seven year long term deals. Now that means for us that if 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 a club wanted to come in and pay pay and try and buy Reese James or uh, a Mason Mount or Amanda Brozier, that means they're going to have to come in and pay a lot of money to buy that contract out. Mm. You know, mm. if Reese James signed a seven year contract, for example, mm. and Real Madrid wants to come in, they'd have to pay a. a, a Upwards of a hundred and fifty million pounds, yeah, straight get, up. Get out clause. Got you know that would be that would be the get out clause because yeah. that you know you think uh, a five a seven year contract at mm -hmm. say two hundred thousand yeah. pounds or say one hundred and twenty thousand pounds a week. You know that's seven years of one hundred and twenty million. That is that one hundred and twenty million? Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, is it? I don't know. Um, but. You know, you, you get what I mean. Like, if you work it out over years and years and years and years and years of money, and that contract, how much it's going to cost that con to get that contract mm -hmm. um, ripped up, mm. you're going to look at upwards of 150 million pounds, at least, at the very least. Um, but I do think this is a good idea from Todd Bowley. I do think it'll work. What do you think, Dad? Do you think it'll work? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a good model to sort of be carrying with, like with with players from the academy and players who are like around the 24, 25 bracket? Yeah, I think it's a good thing to um, sort of, you know, tie them in, yeah, 
and you know if other clubs are interested then they have to you know pay for the get out clause as mm. well um so you know th these clubs would be thinking twice you know before just snapping up players yeah exactly you know, such as barcelona for one yeah um, i mean you know you, you, yeah, I I feel like it's a great it's a great opportunity mm. for us to really get mm. our players tied mm. up into some contracts mm. where play, people can't buy our players mm. out just for the fun of it, because we've had player we've had people do that before. Like look at um, you know Eden Hazard, he only went for a hundred and odd million pounds. I believe Eden Hazard was mm. much more valuable than that. Mm. I believe he was worth at least two hundred million pounds. Mm. You know, Dad, what do you think about, like, Eden Hazard? Do you think he was worth more than, you know, 100 million or whatever it was they paid? Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, around 150 to 200 million. You know, it's an obscene amount of money, you know, just for people like you or I to talk about, you know. Mm. You know, they talk about money as, like, it's monopoly money. Exactly. But, um, yeah, I think it's good to... Um, tie him in yeah to a contract um because so many players um you know just take Lukaku for example you know um have been quite opportunistic yeah um money whores as to say and you know um disregard the club and just want to go they, yeah you know, they're five minute wonders yeah? exactly and especially with players that have come up from our academy mm. as well yeah, I think, you know, we started them young. Yeah, we taught them the trade. So, you know, they got to give back yeah, to us a little bit. Back, tie in. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's a good model to work with. Mm. But yeah, look, let's move on to the final story of the day now. Um, oh, the final story of what's happened over the weekend. Uh, this came in straight after the Chelsea match on Sunday. And I was a bit, I'm not, I'm not too keen on this, to be honest. But let's get into it and then we'll discuss. So, here it is. Chelsea are discussing internally of new proposal for Anthony Gordon as opening bid worth £40 million has been rejected by Everton today. Chelsea could try um, include, try to include players as Frank Lampard wanted more than one Chelsea FC player this summer. Now, <sighs> Anthony Gordon, I see the talent. I see the talent. Like, I see the... The player he could become, but hmm. to pay upwards of 40 to, 40 to, 40 to 50 million pounds for him worries me because we're paying so much money for someone so young. I get hmm. Fafana, okay? I get why we're paying that money for Fafana because he's already established in the Leicester first team. He's already an established player uh, in what in the Premier League. Anthony Gordon only came into the squad last season for Everton towards the back end of last season and to pay that money for someone so young who's so inexperienced i do see the potential i do but to pay for someone so young could be dangerous i mean i i give you a prime example of this you know look at someone like uh kai havertz for example german player was established in Germany, great, fine, you know, he's, he's a good player. We paid a lot of money for him, and it hasn't exactly worked out right, uh, uh, you know, really well so far. He scored us the Champions League winning goal, great. But he hasn't been an in-and-out goal scorer or an in-and-out assister for us. You know, he hasn't done a, a hell of a lot. And that's my view, you know, I just don't think we should be paying upwards of £50 million to someone who hasn't really got that much experience in the Premier League. Dad, your thoughts? <laughs> you know, it's a little bit like uh, top of the flops, isn't it? And, um, you know, we, we don't want uh, Everton rejects now. He's not well, an Everton reject, I, though. I, I know, I know. But, basically, I think he's a mediocre player. He, You know, he has got talent, he's good, he's very fast. But... It, it, to go and pay forty million for him, I think it's bizarre. I mean, you look around about twenty, twenty-five million, maybe. Mm. Yeah, um, you know, and see where we go from there. But forty million is a lot of money. That, in my opinion, you know, other people might think different. But if uh, I was 
if I was top early and I was Thomas Tuchel, I would be in no rush. Because I would watch him for another season, let him develop, see how well he does. If he makes it in, you know, to the base, like the basics of the England squad, then you know he's done well. Then you approach it in a different light. You go, okay, he might be something special. Could he? Could he be something? Let's let's try and see if we can get a deal done for him and see if we can make him into something special. But right now, I wouldn't be paying it upwards of fifty, uh, forty to fifty million pounds for the kid. I'm sorry, it's it's not it's not a good idea. We're talking, you know, football is not just a game anymore, it's a business. And if you, it's like putting a bet on a 5,000 to 1 horse. And that horse isn't likely to come in. But, uh, You're putting that bet on him, that yeah. massive bet on him. But what, what gets me in the neck is we're buying, you know, or putting bids in for these midfielders, these defenders... Where's our striker? Where's our striker? There has been talk of a Bamiang, but like yeah, well, there has been Fabrizio Fabrizio Romano has said that a bid is likely to come in this week. A bid is likely to come in this week. That where's our striker? Where is that striker? Exactly. Where is that one player that we have been waiting for? Because I'm sorry, I'm not waiting for another season for Lukaku to come back and do it all over again. I'm not. I'm not waiting around for that crap. No. Get a Bami Yang in. Get him, give him two years. Then, go and find a decent young striker in the market for upwards of 50 to 60 million pounds. You know, someone who's already established. I am gutted. I'm gutted that we didn't have Bowley in earlier. Or that Roman Abramovich had to do what he did earlier because if we had the opportunity I wish we I wish we could have gone in for Haaland mm. we could have gone in for Haaland the season before we, yes we would have had to pay upwards of 150 million for the no, through the nose for him mm. right but let me tell you something Haaland is going to flop at Man City Haaland is going to flop no doubt in my mind I've watched him play yes he scored that goal against West Ham and he scored a penalty and blah 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 He's not going to succeed at Man City. It's not the right style for him. It's too much tick attack of football, too much passy, passy, passy. Not enough, you know, electricity on the ball. Not enough fire. Whereas Tugel's style is bang, 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 through the, through the defence, through the midfield, into the striker. The striker's on the run, gets the ball, puts it in the back of the net. Harlan likes that style of football, that quick, fast, fluid attacking style. Whereas, no offence to Pep, he plays that pass, he pass, pass, though. pass, he pass. Yes, in any place, in the box, the he's in the box, he's, he's a nightmare. Oh. But for Man City, he just doesn't seem to fit the mould of what Pep wants. Because Pep has never played with a striker like this before, I don't think. And, you know, he played with Lewandowski at Bayern Munich, but that was, that was a very different aspect of football. That was German football. This is the Premier League. Mm. We're looking at, you know, the best striker in Europe, at the young best young striker striker in Europe at the moment, Bar mm. Kylian Mbappe. Mm. And I do think he's going to flop, but I do think if Chelsea had got the had got the opportunity, we should have taken it mm. because he could have done it for Tuchel. He would my, have been better. He would have been a better option. Than my Lukaku. advice is, yeah, we don't leave ourselves vulnerable. Yeah, and you know, we make that investment and get a. A world class striker. Get a Bamiyang in for now. A for two years. Striker. Two years with a ba for two years with a Bamiyang. Let someone else develop young who's in Europe or in the UK, you know, in, in Great Britain, you know, in the English clubs in the Premier League and try and find someone and try and get them. Yeah. Because until then we're stuck with our striker. But get a Bamiyang in for God's sake, Bowley. Tuchel, cool. hurry up, hurry him up. Because it's it's, it's we're wasting time. There's only two weeks to go. So the transfer window shuts, and we haven't got a striker. But there, but that, you know, that's that. But yeah, guys, that's the end of today's video. Um, you know, before we end the video, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below on um, your thoughts on Fafana. Will he come to Chelsea? Do you think he'll fit? Casadi, 
do you think he's going to be a good enough player? Do you think what do you think of him? Have you ever seen him play? You know, what's your thoughts on him? Let us know in the comments because we don't have any idea what he's like to 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 really you know see him in a full match. Um, let us know your thoughts on Gordon as well. Do you think it's worth the money? Do you think it's worth that risk? Or do you think we could go out and buy someone else, you know, a, another solid winger for 40, 50 million pounds and save ourselves a heartache of dealing with someone young who could, who could not shine, who may not shine. But yeah, let us know all those thoughts in the comments so, uh, below. Uh, and before we end this video, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn the notification bell icon on to be notified when we upload. And we will see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.